you have two choices. And no offense to BSD people, but we're really only looking at Linux as the Unix choice. NT and Linux. Now, if you look at this environment I described, where we've got, you know, almost 10,000 Unix machines running around the planet, very mature, very advanced, but kicking infrastructure um, for doing software development and deployment, redoing all of that on NT is incredibly difficult. Just porting that to run on Linux is relatively straightforward. In fact, we've done most of it. In fact, we did most of it long before they made the decision to actually do it. Give us a Linux box, hey, we'll just port it, piece of cake. <clears throat> so the path of least resistance for us is to migrate from Sun Solaris to Linux on Intel. Um, this is where, like I said, the NT people are running around thinking real smug like, yeah, we're gonna take the world over. Boy, are they wrong. Now, this is a decision we're in the middle of finalizing. Uh, the arguments are literally being made to the highest levels of senior management that this is the strategy we should take. And I believe that three to five years from now, we're going to have a lot more Intel hardware running Linux than we do Suns running Solaris. And if there's anything from Sun here, I'm sorry to tell you that. Um, NT is going to grow. Can't be stopped. Well, some of us would like to stop it, but we need to keep our jobs. But it's worth mentioning that uh, Linux on the S390 could also become pretty strategic. Jury's still out. We're not clear what we'd use it for um, because we have such a big distributed environment. I think you're going to also see more and more open source software released from Morgan Stanley. Um, our internal pro community has, has already released a, a several modules on CPAN. Once I got the floodgates open, um, it's been pretty easy. Um, basically, all you need is your manager, which in my case is me, to say, yes, you can release this. It's not giving us direct competitive advantage. And then copyright it under our name and release it under your choice, either the artistic license or the GPL. I personally still prefer Larry's artistic license. I'm not that much a fanatic about the GPL. But at the end of the day, we really don't care. The point is you're putting it back into the community. Um, we've also funded some open source developments because it's, it looks cheap to us. The, when you try to fund development at a commercial firm, you're not paying the developers. You're paying the marketing, the sales, and all that other infrastructure these corporations wrap around their poor little lowly paid developers. And at the end of the day, if you spend a million bucks with a company you know, to get software enhanced in a way you'd like, which often means fixing a bug, but they claim that's a missing feature. You know, at the end of the day, maybe 5% of that's going to dash developers. In the open source community, you bypass all those middlemen and you go right to the people making the changes. Um, and we've, we've been very successful with a few different changes. We, we paid uh, Mike Pepler to do some changes we wanted to see in DVD Sybase. Everyone benefits from that. Those changes went right into the open source product itself as the next upgrade. We wanted to see them sooner. We didn't have the manpower to do them. Mike had the skill set. We know Mike pretty well, so we worked out a contract with him. And for something like twenty or $30,000, which to him was a huge sum and to us was pocket change, um, we got the changes made. Not to say that we're going to be cheap with you people, but <laughs> at the end of the day, to a company like us, you know, if we're spending $100,000 with uh, as an investment to in see some features we care about in the open source world, that really is cheap. Uh, the, the price tags that the big vendors try to get for us for product enhancements or ports literally are seven and sometimes eight figures. They're huge. Um, and I think, like I said, at the end of the day, it's the, the people doing the changes aren't getting the money. So what do we like about using open source? Well, <clears throat> so you've seen how it's evolved into being a key part of infrastructure and how it will continue to evolve and I believe will be a more and more important part of our infrastructure over time. Open source software enables and encourages innovation in a way Microsoft has no clue about. Is Craig Mundy here? I was hoping he's here so I could point at him when I made this point, but... I can't see him anyway, it's too bright. And I wish Microsoft and the other big companies, Sun and everybody else who's selling big commercial products would listen to this, because this is, I think, in some ways the most important point I had to make. When I'm trying to craft my enterprise and a given piece of software, you know, doesn't wrap around one of my sharp edges and needs a change, sometimes those changes are small. Then if I have to go back to the vendor to make those changes, it's an uphill battle because the vendor owns the product and they control and they own all the innovation within that product. I can only innovate outside of it. With open source, I can go into that product and make the innovations that I need to fit my infrastructure. I'm not bound by the vendor, they don't control that. Um, okay, admittedly, I may make changes that the open source community may not like, but you just, that's why you have to participate in the community um, and communicate the need for this, the, these changes so you can get them integrated. The commercial vendors want you to innovate, but they want you to innovate by building dependencies on their code so they can attach a siphon hose to your wallet and suck cash out of it for all of eternity. The open source community is not trying to do that. That's the key difference. Now, admittedly, we have a pretty big wallet, so with a lot of siphon hoses attached to it.
But at the end of the day, you know, we are spending an awful lot of money on commercial software, frightening sums of money on commercial software. Um, and the open source is costing us a lot less. And for the investment we make in it, for the actual money we have to spend on open source software, which isn't a lot, um, we're getting a hell of a lot more for our money. Now, the other thing that bothers me, and this is why I personally don't want to live in a world where Microsoft has taken the planet over. Ah, let's go back to being a jazz musician and quit coding if that happens. Then um, the next generation of programmers will be educated with little or no understanding of the internals of the actual operating systems that they're building these innovations on top of. And I think that's a huge loss. Yeah, you want people coding at a higher level and not worrying about the infrastructure, but you want those, what's the word for it? I was gonna say geeks, but that's the wrong word. You want those black box people out there. That, that, everybody, how many people took apart their dad's watch when they were a kid? How many people were able to put it back together again? <laughs> I did that once. Actually, my dad could find watches I could take apart. We need people like that because those inquisitive minds need to be able to go into the black box. They need to be able to understand how this stuff works. They need to be not only enabled, but encouraged to go in and innovate for all those core technologies that we're all using. I'm 37. I'm not going to be hacking for the rest of my life. I have a lovely wife and two kids, and the fact is that I don't do all-nighters anymore. Right? Everybody in this room, 15 to 20 years from now, okay, I hope for your sake is not doing 60-hour work weeks, just hacking. We all need to get a life. We need that next generation of people that come after us to have the same opportunity we did to go in and learn how this code works. Go in and read the source. Go in and innovate inside these products, not just innovate around them. Because if corporate America, here I am working for corporate America, I'm saying this. If the corporate software world in particular controls all that core infrastructure, then what we will have is a generation of software developers that are far less creative, that are far less innovative, even around those core technologies than we have today. And that would be sad. And that's not the world I want to live in.